What up? Welcome back to Computer Processors Part 2, the Advanced Edition. I'm just going to be upfront about this. A lot of the topics I want to talk about are kind of complicated, crazy ideas, big sounding words. If you enjoyed Part 1 of Computer Processors, I think this video should be fun. I'm going to go over a lot of the secret sauce behind modern day computer processors. I can't promise I'll cover everything in 5 minutes again, but if you stick around, hopefully you learn something. So if you're ready, let's do this. First, we need to revisit the idea of a computer program. Remember, a computer program is just a big list of instructions that a computer processor can understand. Remember how I compared a processor to a chef? A computer program is just like a fancy Italian recipe that a chef processor can understand. You give a chef a recipe and he makes an eggplant lasagna. Scusi, scusi. Okay, so the chef or the computer processor is just a machine. He can't think for himself and he can't write recipes. The recipes, or in other words, computer programs, are written by engineers. Ten different engineers could write the same recipe for eggplant lasagna ten different ways. Computer processors can't write software. They have to execute software written by engineers. Alright, let's take a quick break and make sure we're crystal clear between what's the difference between hardware and software. The processor itself can't change. It's a physical device. It's hardware. Once you buy a computer with its processor inside, that's the one you have until you switch it out and put in a new one. On the other hand, software or the cooking recipes can always change. That's why it's soft. You can install new software, download updates, or uninstall it from your computer. If the software is broken, that's fine. You can just download an update and it'll fix something. On the other hand, if the hardware is messed up, you're screwed and the world's gonna end. The software is written by people like you and me. It's very subjective. Some people's software will just be better than other people's software, straight up. All right, let's go back to chef land a little bit and take an example. Let's say we're trying to cook pork fried rice and we have two recipes. The first recipe is like, start cooking the rice. Look at the timer. When it's done, take it out and mix it in with the pork. A more efficient recipe could be Start cooking the rice. While it's cooking, cut the pork up. After the rice is done, you can mix the two. If the chef gets a crappy recipe, the pork fried rice is gonna take a lot longer to cook, right? To write more efficient recipes or computer programs, engineers often split up their programs into these things we call threads. Every single computer program always has one thread, but that's the minimum. It can always have one or more threads. So in the pork fried rice example, the bad recipe could be only using one thread. In the more efficient pork fried rice recipe, there's one thread handling the rice cooking, and then there's another thread handling the pork cutting, and they can combine later on. So it's really up to the computer programmers to write efficient recipes or software. Sometimes there could be a situation where your computer program really needs more than one thread. What I described to you guys is the basic idea of multi-threaded software. And a lot of complex programs that you run on your computer, almost all of them I bet, are multi-threaded. Now that we kind of understand multi-threaded software, we can move back to processors or hardware. Alright, let's take a really simple example with a computer processor that can only execute one thread at a time. Remember, it's not one process at a time, it can only execute one thread at any point in time. Just think about chefs a little bit. They can only do one thing at a time. You can't tell a chef to cut the potatoes and stir the rice. At the same time, he only has two arms. Now, when you're using your computer, you have this crazy experience that everything's happening at the same time, but it's really not. Like I said, our simple processor can only handle one thread at a time. It just switches between every single thread between every single process extremely quickly. So you get this awesome simultaneous user experience. Remember, these things run at billions of cycles per second. For normal users, you'd be surprised that just one processor that can only handle one thread can do everything you need to do and it's still probably underutilized. You can have your Spotify playing, your web browser up, and your Gchats going off. And it's still just one processor, one thread. So it's time to upgrade the processors a little bit. I'm gonna introduce processor SMT. And what SMT stands for is simultaneous multi-threading. It sounds hella complicated when I say it, right? But based on what we've been talking about, can you guess what it means? When a processor can do SMT, it means it can handle more than one thread at the same time. 
If you have SMT, one processor, instead of handling one thread at a time, it could handle up to two or four threads at a time. The chef analogy of that is if I grew four or six arms. If I had six arms, I could handle three things at the same time. I could do three chef instructions at the same time with six arms. But if I had six arms, I'd take up mad space and I'd take up mad energy and my chef battery would die super fast, wouldn't it? All right, so let's take it another step further and introduce multi-core. Multi-core is when the processor itself is duplicated in the computer system. So when people say dual or quad core, there's actually two or four processors on that computer. This would be analogous to two chefs working in the same kitchen or four chefs working in the same kitchen. Also remember that each chef might have six arms. So you could have four six arm chefs working in the same kitchen. So what we're talking about here is multi-core processors and each of them can handle multiple threads. If you have four processors and each one can handle four threads, technically a computer should be able to handle 16 threads at one time. So a lot of people think that having quad core means you get four times performance and that's wrong. With more processors, it doesn't make everyone happy. Think about if we had four chefs working in the kitchen. Not all the chefs can get to the refrigerator at the same time, right? If one chef's using the fridge, all the chefs have to wait before they can access the fridge. Just like a kitchen, a lot of components on the computer system is shared, like the RAM memory, for example. If one processor is accessing a particular part of memory, then other processors aren't able to access that same region. That's why four cores doesn't necessarily mean four times better. You could stick tons of chefs into the kitchen and it could just become inefficient after a while. So if I haven't lost you yet and you watched up to this point in the video, you should understand what this phrase means. I have a multi-core system with SMT capable processors. Doesn't that sound kind of cool? SMT is also known as hardware threading sometimes, but I think the term SMT is slightly more official. Actually, if you ever bring up SMT or hardware threads in real life, nobody would understand what you're talking about. So you can call them whatever you want. You can call them unicorns. So let's review a little bit. Don't get hardware threads confused with software threads. Remember, software threads is how a computer programmer splits up his recipe to make the pork fried rice more efficiently. Hardware threads is when one processor can handle more than one thread at the same time. I don't know if you remember this, but back in the day, there was a lot of buzz when Intel first released their hyper-threading technologies. So it sounds pretty cool, but what hyper-threading is, is just Intel's version of SMT. Other companies that make their own processors have their own version of SMT. Hyper-threading is just one particular implementation of simultaneous multi-threading. All right, so I packed a lot of stuff into this video. Hopefully you added some new big computer words into your vocabulary or I just probably confused the hell out of you. I just wanted to give some big picture concepts about some of the ideas that people really don't know about. Not many people know what multi-core even means. So next time you go to Best Buy and you want to be a douchebag, you can just ask the sales rep, how many hardware threads does that laptop handle? So now you know the difference between software threads and hardware threads. You know what SMT is, and you know what multi-core is. Remember, quad-core doesn't mean four times better. All right, I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something. Please like or leave me a comment. I'll certify you officially processor savvy. Catch you next time.